Greetings, everyone. It is I, the one and only Princess Zelda here, and as you can tell, I'm new here. So because of this, though, welcome you all from the likes of the Maxi Toys videos. So, ladies and gentlemen, we'll present to you our next installment in terms of my video game collection video series. Because I think, as far as what uh, Link told me about the fact that in terms of translation, not about the fact that despite he couldn't speak, but basically though, he did mention to me something that uh, previously in terms of the video game collection video series, that both Pinkie Pie and Rarity have both managed to done the Wii U game collection updated version because due to the celebration of, well, you know what I mean, the 10th anniversary of the system itself. But either way, though, that's far as saying goes. That's about it, basically. So here we are on the forms of in 2023, of course. And to begin with, with the forms of 2023 rendition of the actual video game collection video, we decided to go for the PlayStation. Well, to be more specifically, PS1, as as far as some people attempt to call it. Now, originally, though, we did already done this collection before, back in 2020. In this case, the lockdown, mind you. Basically, though, is the fact that Sylvester the Cat has technically already did this collection. But when I'm looking back on it right now, that's, uh, it's so right for the video. Except the fact that, well, relatively speaking, that, uh, the reviews count wasn't all that ridiculously high. Uh, compared to the forms of how it does it in, uh, well, any other updated version of the game collection videos nowadays. But hopefully by that time, we'll hopefully get this right this time. So, yeah, that's basically how this goes, basically. So, yeah, for the PlayStation 1, it was actually a pretty cool system looking back in it right now. Especially it did first came out. Well, generally speaking, there are two different models of the PlayStation 1. As you can see, we still managed to get ourselves the PS1 Slim model, which it did came out in 2000, strangely. Whilst compared to the other model, which did came out in 1994. Now, of course, that particular system has been discontinued until 2006. So as a result, though, the greatest... Uh, uh, thing about the PlayStation is the actual usage of the CD technology system. Like, usually, unlike in the uh, Nintendo 64, alongside with the forms of the Super Nintendo, and the NES essentially uses cartridges. And I think it's just me, but I'm pretty sure this is the first ever game system to able to incorporate the actual memory card storage. So, yeah, basically, though, is the fact that if you have your memory card with you, Basically, you can be able to actually save your games onto there. So, pretty cool, though. And it does have two controller slots, though, which, as a result, it wasn't until when uh, one of those accessories exists called multi-tap, where basically you can play up to one to four players with the multi-tap function, which I will say, I was very, very uh, pleased to hear that existence. But it's just a shame that I didn't able to actually obtain it for myself, you know? But uh, the best-selling games on this system was actually Gran Turismo. So, I definitely heard about the series, but I haven't exactly gone around into playing them. Because I'm more into, like, other familiar franchises as far as what Link honestly recommends me so. So, either way, though, as far as the actual game collections are concerned for the PlayStation 1 physical games-wise, it's actually gone a little bit more upgraded this time around. And as far as... Digital games are concerned, thanks to the forms of the PlayStation 3 downloadable versions. Well, suffice to say, it's actually gone a bit more lower this time around. Clearly because about the fact that, well, we used to have certain digital games in the past, but then we do found out that physical games is much more of a benefit for ourselves. But either way, speaking of such though, let's get into the actual collection, shall we? Okay, so first off, we'll do the physical games first, and as far as honorable mentions to the PS1 games, I'm going to be hooking up my PlayStation 3, which, as you can tell, I've already turned it on, but uh, we'll get to that eventually. So first off, let's get into the physical games first. So, yeah, and as usual, we'll go in this alphabetical order, unlike the forms of how it does it back in uh, 2020, where basically Sylvester did somehow come across into that mistake where... He basically puts Toy Story 2 after, um, you know what I mean, Klonoa, just because he just somehow got confused with the actual alphabetical order decision. So, yeah, you know what I mean. So, anyways, let's get into the collection, shall we? Ape Escape. 
So you probably already know about this game because Sonic is miles able to exponentially by that time until next week, he miles able to finish this game, believe it or not. But yeah, as far as when we did play this game, we did have a lot of fun playing this game. Like, surely it's all unique in that respect, especially because this game utilizes the DualShock controller itself. Because mind you about the fact that if you ever play the game with, like, none of those analog sticks, it will be entirely unplayable. So relatively speaking, though, it's a very unique way to able to actually know something how cool this game can be. But there's also the this game releases on the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 digital uh, versions only. Well, at least I might as well give the actual game another chance on the PlayStation 4 release. So that way I can able to obtain the insane amount of trophies I can probably get, but maybe in a later time. But uh, yeah, can't wait to able to actually get back into this game again on the PS4 downloadable version eventually. Just to ensure we need to be able to get enough space on the PlayStation 4 hard drive. But uh, either way, pretty good game. Or should I say, the awesome game ever. And it's a great way to start things off with the Ape Escape series. Crash Bandicoot. So, suffice to say, out of all the actual uh, Crash Bandicoot games in this entire trilogy on the PlayStation 1 era, um, it is certainly it still is a marvelous game. But I will say, looking back in it right now, it kind of feels a bit outdated compared to its sequels. But uh, for its time though, this is a really, really great game to start things off with the Crash Bandicoot series. It actually becomes more accurately like a PlayStation mascot. Well, as far as what I did look uh, back on it, or even in some cases though, after playing around for a bit, um, I haven't gone far into this particular version because I'm used to with the insane trilogy version of Crash 1 because of the forms of the controls makes things a bit more better in my opinion. But relatively speaking though, it's just about the fact that the only level I'm actually onto right now is, surprisingly enough, Papu, Papu. So relatively speaking though, it's just about the fact that it might take a bit some time to get used to it, able to like... Get back to the game. It's usually it's weirdly enough that this game is not compatible with the analog stick in mind, because this is a 3D game after all. But uh I still enjoy it regardless, despite its uh, uh outdated uh segments, with all that ridiculous how difficult the game can be sometimes, and also the controls might felt a bit stiff at times, and also don't even get me started on the forms of the ultimate challenge in the game, which is of course 101 uh did I say 101? I keep thinking about the future games for some reason. A 100% completion of the game, which basically you have to get every single gems in the game, meaning that you have to break every single boxes in each level. So, including colored gems as well, which it is entirely impossible. Well, at least as far as I'm aware, don't even get me started on the, uh, the save system. Like, in order to save the game, you need to be able to complete the whole level, like, you know, break all the boxes and stuff. And also you have to be able to get the ton of tokens in order to do that, which is pretty ridiculous if you ask me. But hey, at least I'll get back to this game at some point, which I do have some fun memories with it. Speaking of such, Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back. Yeah, a much more of an improvement sequel to the forms of how it does it in uh, Crash 1. So, excuse me. About the fact of the matter is, though, is that the one thing that makes this game such a massive improvement over the original game is that the controls are almost perfection. And on top of that, the actual gameplay is much more expansive than the forms of how it does it from the forms within the first game, thanks to more movesets. In addition to that, though, some very unique themes of the level themes, like ranging from jungle themes to ice, and as well as the forms out to space, and you probably name the rest. And uh, I haven't completed this game yet either. Because I think I'm actually on to Warp Room 4. Which does manage to contain one of the most infamous levels in Crash Bandicoot 2. Called Cold Hard Crash. That basically though, you know with the forms of the box, uh, breaking boxes and stuff. And especially noticeable, it's like, well you know what I mean. But uh, it's a really, really fantastic sequel. Which as a result of that kind of stuff though, you should probably still recommend it. Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped. Yeah, because I can tell from the spine. So yeah, kind of weird though is the fact that we actually going for those physical games with platinum label on it. I've no idea why, but either way though, that's as far as saying goes, that's all I can say about it. So yeah, for Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped, 
Um, is a must perfect game for the sake of the Crash Bandicoot games, or should I say, one of the most masterpieces in terms of Crash Bandicoot games by far. Relatively speaking, ranging from level themes, and it's basically it's like the expansion to Crash Bandicoot 2, except their noticeable differences this time with their unique level themes. In addition to that, you're able to actually now have the analog controller support, which I suppose it does feature it on, yeah, it does feature it on Crash Bandicoot 2, after all. So yeah, I forgot to mention that. So yeah, basically though, it's the fact that, well, in addition to that, you can enable to play as not only as Crash Bandicoot, but also Coco as well, which is pretty cool. And even especially noticeable that this is the game that was actually introduced to the forms of the, the most intimidating villains of all time, which is of course, um, Uka Uka. So yeah, pretty cool villain, I might add. So, I haven't gone to this uh, yet either, because I've been meaning to be able to complete the first game and the second game first before I dive right into the third one. But uh, still, this is a great Crash Bandicoot game, and it's a masterpiece compared to the forms of both 1 and 2. Because usually the problem I have with uh, Crash Bandicoot 2 sometimes is the backtracking aspect that just feels a bit, I don't know, too archaic for my taste, but that's besides the point. Crash Bash, which is basically, it's just a Mario Party equivalent to Crash Bandicoot. Well, at least generally that this, ca this game came out the same year as Mario Party 2, but that's besides the point. So, predictably speaking, this is actually one of my least favorite Crash Bandicoot games on the PlayStation. Nothing wrong or anything, it's just about the fact that, well, it plays very similar to Mario Party, but the problem with this is, is the fact that this game is gets stupidly hard as you progress for the story mode, ranging by the forms of the ridiculous amount of challenges you have to go through, and also because about the fact that you have to play the exactly the same mini games as you were for the first time, meaning about the fact that there's a lot of repetition on it. In addition to that though, I feel like, well, the soundtrack is actually pretty good, like probably is the best part about the game in my opinion. Although the visuals are a bit passable, they're a bit more far cry to the forms of how it does in the original trilogy, including the next game, which I'll show this off in a second. That uh, basically though, this this is the first Crash Bandicoot game is not being made by Naughty Dog. So usually, relatively speaking, it's just usually it's been made by um, obviously Eurocom Entertainment Software, which we definitely heard about that company from any other PlayStation titles, which I'll get to that in a moment. So. Yeah, it still is a good game, but it's definitely one of my least favorite Crash Bandicoot games on the PlayStation era. Pretty much because that Naughty Dog wasn't on, wasn't involved in this title. Although, unfortunately though, for those of you who actually got yourselves the Platinum version of this game, uh, can't be bothered able to open up the case, that basically though, there's actually a cheat code that you can only be active, that you, can, you only need to get like, uh, when it has like a black label, on the actual game cover, including the game disc itself, that if you insert the actual cheat codes, then you can able to actually access to every single mini games in this entire game. However, if you own the platinum version, there's no way you can able to activate it. So I was the most unluckiest person of the world. So bit of a miss unfortunate right there, but that's besides the point. Crash Team Racing, oh yes, the good old card racing game on the system. Relatively speaking though, speak for itself, because this is the most iconic uh, multiplayer experiences of all time on the PlayStation department, because, well, think of like uh, Mario Kart 64, except, well, it's in fully in 3D, and on th in addition to that though, I found this game to be a really, really huge blast playing this, although I'm not exactly finished up with the story mode yet though, but, at the very least, I did somehow activate every single cheat code in this game, so I managed to unlock every single character in the game, which makes the entire game a lot more uh, manageable to able to actually complete everything on this version, because there's, sure enough, there's also the remake of this game on the PlayStation 4, and Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch as well, which I also highly recommend, especially because you can able to experience the game in online play, and yeah, you should probably get this game, especially noticeable, it's like, it's one of the greatest card racing games on the system, so yeah, you should still recommend it. Klonoa, Daughter Phantom Mile, oh yes, this is a wonderful, wonderful game this is. Probably speaking, my favorite platformer games on the entire community standpoint, which as a result, 
This is without a doubt my favorite platform of games on the system, ranging from its uh, rich visuals and especially noticeable how cool the gameplay can be. In addition to that though, the most, uh, you know, meditating uh, villains of all time. In addition to that though, is the fact that since I still managed to get the uh, get this copy of the game, which as a result though, despite it's a bit scratched up, but it still plays just fine enough on my PS1, including the PlayStation 3 as well, which if you, those of you wondering about that particular Let's Play in mind, you can probably uh, check it for yourself. So yeah, pretty cool game. And if you already know about this game, because I'm pretty sure Piglet has done this Let's Play back in 2019, and I think I should probably recommend this, even though that at this point in time that this game is going to get super uh, ridiculously expensive nowadays, even if you lived in the UK or America, essentially. But luckily, I got the game for quite cheap for about, despite it's still a bit pricey, though, like 80, 80 quid. So, yeah, it's ridiculous, which either way, still fantastic game, but even though no, it didn't go for high expectations for its selling numbers, so. Miss Pac-Man Maze Madness. I haven't touched this game yet. I will have to be briefly honest here. Well, mind you, we were expecting to be able to do this game at some point. We don't know exactly when though, but uh, either way though, what I've heard is actually a pretty fun game, even though it's almost inspired by the maze segments of Pac-Man World 1, except you play as Miss Pac-Man instead of the usual Pac-Man. So, yeah, the reason why I've got it, just because, well, feel like having a Miss Pac-Man onto my game collection standpoint. It's a bit of a shame that uh, Miss Pac-Man is no longer going to be existence in uh, Pac-Man World Repack because it's been replaced by Pac-Mom, apparently. But either way, though, I definitely heard about that, which either way, though, that's pretty sad able to see Miss Pac-Man gone away, but, or should I say get replaced, but either way. Speaking of Pac-Man World, there it is, the original Pac-Man world, the one that started it all with, in my honest opinion, one of the most underrated series of all time, which is of course Pac-Man world. Yeah, for the first game in the series though, I actually really enjoyed this title, even though if you, those of you wondering about the actual Let's Play of the game, then you should probably uh, check that Let's Play out if you can. And also because about the fact that of course the remake of this game does exist, on uh, not only on the PlayStation 4, but also Xbox uh, One and Nintendo Switch, Xbox Series X, and even especially noticeable with the PlayStation 5 as well. And I think possibly the Steam version as well, but I haven't exactly uh, commented on the PC versions or something. So yeah, a pretty cool platformer, despite it's a bit difficult nowadays, especially after getting used to with the, uh, the remake remaster or something. But either way, really great time, and I think I highly recommend it. Rayman. Yeah, also the one that started it all when it comes to the Rayman series. Which, thankfully, for those of you probably wondering, yeah, Rayman is going to be back on Mario Plus Rapids Sparks of Hope as uh, the third DLC. So, very excited about that. But anyway, enough about that, Jibby Jabba. Yeah, for Rayman, it's actually a pretty cool game, especially as one of the best looking games on the PlayStation. Despite how the fact that the difficulty is a bit too much for my liking, most notably if you really want to go for 100% completion, which, good luck for able to try to get 100% completion in this game. Because believe me, uh, it starts off very easy, but then when you get to like the musical world or something like that, the game expects you to able to become a bit more tougher as, as far as I'm aware. But either way, though, that's as far as I can say about it. But um, at least I'm very glad to able to get this game on the PlayStation 1 version, because there's also technically the Sega Saturn version of the game, which I would like to get, but it's a bit pricey at the moment. But yeah, for Rayman, pretty cool game. Pretty cool game indeed. Rayman 2 The Great Escape. This is basically the PlayStation version of Rayman 2, which some people seem to say that this is one of the weaker versions of Rayman 2 The Great Escape, because some people seem to think that the, uh, the Sega Dreamcast version is much more superior. But I will say that despite it's a bit rough around the edges on this version, it actually has some really, really dang good voice acting in there. And there's also some extra content that was not found on any other versions, which... I don't think I can probably explain about this too much, but either way, though, I will uh, keep it silent for now on. I just have no idea why I'm saying this for this point. 
But uh, the reason why I've got this version, just because of that extra content you get if you beat in the game for the first time. So, relatively speaking though, you probably know what I'm talking about. And conveniently enough though, that I've actually got multiple versions of the game, except the DS version or the iOS version. But I'll be planning to meaning to get the DS version at some point, despite the DS version is probably one of the worst versions of the game, for sure. But either way though, yeah, that's the reason why I got this, so, yeah. Sparrow the Dragon, another one of the games that usually started it all when it comes to those amazing iconic series, which is of course Sparrow the Dragon, which, as a result, the first game is actually really, really dang good, even though, mind you, the only time exception is the fact that, for those of you who lived in Japan, that this game never received, received that very well in terms of reception in Japan, probably much because of the forms of the actual camera angle or anything else to be more specific. Let me know in the comments down below, because I used to have this as the digital version of the game, but now I don't. So, but either way, I've been meaning to able to try this game out eventually, but hopefully I will do once I've completed certain other games in the meantime. But yeah, definitely looking forward to able to playing some Spyro the Dragon action. So, yeah, pretty cool to have that. Spyro 2, Gateway to Glamour. Also known as, uh, I think it's Spyro 2, Reptos Rage, for those of you who lived in North America. But I think personally, the European version of this title makes it a bit more um, accurate to me though. I have no idea why I pointed things out. But basically, though, Spyro 2 gave way to Glamour is actually a really cool game as well. Well, apart from the fact that, as you can tell, my condition on the front cover is a bit scratched up. But either way, though, it still works even to this day on my PS1. Although I don't have the manual with it too, which is a bit of unfortunate. But uh, yeah, I remained able to like get my hands on this though. And for I've played it, it's actually really, really cool. It's basically, it's almost like the uh, the expansion to the original game. But either way though, definitely cannot wait to be able to actually get this game a shot on my own time. So just to ensure I can continue playing it more. Sparrow, Year of the Dragon. Well, technically if I like to call it Spyro 3, uh, Year of the Dragon, because this is the third installment of the original uh, Spyro the Dragon trilogy, which it is a really, really great game. Especially if they introduce some new mechanics to the game, like skateboarding, alongside with some new NPCs to control, and in addition to that though, how fun the game can be. And even especially noticeable about the fact that this wasn't until when it gets to the point that, much like Crash Bandicoot, uh, between this, alongside with the other two games I've shown you earlier, that it actually receives the entire remastered trilogy on its modern hardware. So yeah, pretty cool. And uh, yeah, that's as far as I can say about this game. It's just so, so good. And especially notable, once I finish up with Spyro uh, 2 on my own time, hopefully I dive right into this. And speaking of such, for those of you who want to know about the Year of the Dragon, because this game came out in 2000, even though, strangely enough, that this game has never saw the release in Japan for some reason, which I honestly have no idea why, but I do definitely know for the Year of the Dragon is going to be next year for 2024, so, generally speaking, though, that's as far as I can usually say for that particular count, for that, well, you know what I mean. But hey, this is a pretty cool game to have. And lastly, in terms of the physical games for the PlayStation 1, Toy Story 2, Buzz Lightyear to the Rescue. Oh yes, the best movie tie-in game ever, at least as far as I can imagine for saying that. Because relatively speaking, though, based off from one of my favourite Pixar films of all time, and this is certainly one of the most greatest Pixar games I've ever played. Alongside with Toy Story 3, on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. But even then though, I definitely will able to say, you probably should able to recommend the PlayStation version of this game. Because there's also multiple versions of this game on a PC, as well as the Nintendo 64 version. Which I think I honestly ignored the N64 version, because it has some rough around the edges for sure. But there's also the ones on the Sega Dreamcast version as well, which I was meant to able to try to get, it, but unfortunately though, my Dreamcast suffers from a lot of issues recently, so... But i have be meaning to able to try to pick it up at some point, but not now. But uh, yeah, pretty cool game, and you should probably definitely recommend this. And I think this game was also on the PlayStation 4, alongside with PlayStation 5 as well, so you can actually have 
multiple ways you can able to play this game. For a physical version of this game, you can play on the PS1 or PS2 or PS3, but there is now the forms of the digital version on the PlayStation 3 and 4 and 5. Jeez, this game is actually a lot popular. And I think there's also the ones on the forms that have been uh, the PSP and the PlayStation V2 versions as well, but I just simply lost count on it. So now we've actually got the physical games out of the way. It's like roughly 15 of these things, which is actually a bit more impressive than the forms of how it does it from last time, which we actually got about a little amount. So now let's move on to the PlayStation 3 uh, downloadable games on the PlayStation 1 titles. So let's head onto the TV screen right here. Mind you, I apologize for that particular quality. It's a bit passable at points, but either way, as you can see, we've now down to three titles this time. So let's see what games have we got. So first off we have is Mickey's Wild Adventure, which is basically it's just the 32-bit version of Mickey Mania, which I still have a fun time with the game. And even then though, the PlayStation version is much more harder than the forms of how it does it on the Mega Drive versions or the Super Nintendo versions, but at least I did have a really great time playing this game still. So yeah, that's the reason why I got it. Next up we have is Disney's action game featuring Hercules, based off from the Hercules movie, which I do manage to enjoy the movie. And as far as playing the game is concerned, um, it was pretty good, despite it's a bit difficult in certain parts, but ultimately speaking though, I think I should probably recommend to game this game exponentially, assuming if you're hardcore 2D platformers or anything else like that, but that's the reason why I've got it. And lastly, we have Castlevania Symphony of the Night, the most popular PlayStation game of all time. Not just by the forms of the most popular PlayStation game of all time, but it also is the best Castlevania game ever because of how unique it was. Although, I was expecting to able to actually get this game physically, but it's way too expensive in European countries, which I honestly have no idea why. It's actually gone pretty pricey in the UK version. But ultimately speaking though, I simply just go for the digital version just because it's a bit cheaper. In addition to that though, you can play the game either on the PlayStation 3 or your PSP if you do somehow manage to pull off a USB uh, mode. to able to actually transfer certain stuff if you're liking. So yeah, that's about it basically. So uh, yeah, there's only three PlayStation digital download games onto my PS3. So... Yeah, and I suppose that's about it in terms of our PlayStation 1 game collection video update. So yeah, it's actually a little bit more impressive this time. Although originally, I was expecting to be able to include Final Fantasy VII, but I haven't gone around to it though. Because what I've heard is actually a very popular RPG game on the PlayStation 1. Or should I say, the most iconic one at that. So anyway, so hope you guys do enjoy this collection. And this is me, Princess Zelda here from the Maxi Toys. I suppose, up next, in terms of our video game collection video updates for it, I would say possibly the PlayStation 2 or PlayStation 3, if, the, if time will tell. But either way, though, we're not going to get ahead of ourselves. And for those of you probably wondering, what about the Nintendo Switch game update collection video? That can wait. That can wait for a very, very long time, believe me. So, yeah, see you guys then. Ciao.